Hi everyone, the Cine Military Affair, known all over the world because it's the biggest military fair in Europe. Uh, this place instantly gives you a headache. I am going to take you on a trip to the Cine Military Affair 2022. I always went there when I was a kid, they had crazy stuff there and the last time I was there was in 2019. I actually made a video about that as well. Normally this fair is for two days and now they actually changed it to one day so all the thousands of people who normally come in two days are here now in one day. Like I already said, this place instantly gives you a headache. I was walking all day long with a headache because of all the thousands of people who are basically pushing you to death. It was a very busy day, we've seen some crazy stuff, and let me just stop talking right now, enjoy the video. Okay, so we arrived at the location and I believe the entry per person is also 15 euros. We cannot sneak illegally inside, so we have to pay that. So we are here with Brian and his girlfriend, Daniela. Hi guys. Hello again. So what's your goal to buy today? Well, I am uh, going for paratrooper material. Yeah. So I need an M5 uh, gas mask. Uh, M5 gas mask? Pouch. All right. Uh, a M6 uh, skateboard. A what? M6 uh, ladder uh, skateboard for okay. uh, the knife. Yeah. Maybe a uh, paratrooper first aid, but I will see. Maybe I found. It's gonna be an expensive I, day, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Probably I'm gonna buy completely different uh, things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. N never nothing. <laughs> no. I'm actually planning to not buy anything, but that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. No? I'm basically here to just enjoy the show, but I mean. You're gonna buy a German helmet, I, I'm almost for sure. You're gonna see a nice German helmet that has been cleaned or something, you're gonna buy it. We're gonna see on the end of the day what's gonna happen. I mean, I'm not searching for anything particular, but Ten ammunition I boxes. can never leave without anything. So that's a problem because I need my money for something else basically at this you're moment. Buy a hot dog. Maybe, maybe I'm gonna buy a hot dog. Yeah, hot maybe dog. that's. It's probably the best purchase for me at this point. It's gonna be an interesting day. It's gonna, it's, I mean, Cine Expo, the biggest um, military fair in whole Europe, so exciting. It's been a while since I've been here, so. Yeah, it is a nice day, so. It's a great day. It's warm. It Last is. Last time we were here, everybody was in the yeah. winter jacket, so. It's been a while since I've been here, so. We're gonna find out. Okay, so we just passed the checkpoint and we had to pay 15 euros per person. And can you imagine there are like thousands of people here visiting this place, how much money they're making? Because pay 15 euros to pay much more here. Yeah, it's look, right. here you go. That's what you pay 15, look, there it is. It's literally there, 15 euros, unbelievable. So we decided to take a quick look outside first and then go to the big halls. The only problem is, there is so much to see. You literally have to force yourself not to buy anything, because this is just a start. After looking around for a bit, we decided to enter the first hall. You can literally find everything in here, from tiny parts that you can use for restoration projects, 
to weapons, helmets, uniforms, equipment, etc. To be honest, I couldn't even really film in here because there were so much people that I was more focused on keeping my personal stuff safe. Big dealers from all over the world come to this place to sell their stuff. So we are here in Cine and we are with... Connor, hello, I'm from Cascorro Militaria. And what do you have for sale? Well, we have a little bit of everything. We have a few tunics, we have a beautiful general's tunic over there. And um, we're just, uh, yeah, it's our first time here at the fair, so we're excited and uh, hopefully we get, a, we get a lot of sales, hopefully. All right, and you have a website as well? Yes, we have it here, right here. CascorroCollectionismoMilitar.com Okay. Uh, we are updating it now a bit more regularly and uh, yeah, there's gonna be tons of new items on the website soon, so please check it out. Okay, be sure to check it out because as you can see this is all really really perfect stuff right here great quality so be sure to take a look at the website take care so Connor from Cascoro Militaria contacted me a while back telling me that he had a surprise for me if I came to the Cine military affair but when we met at the fair he actually had to sell the item that he wanted to give me because something really unfortunate happened in the early morning, around 9, he was talking to a customer for like 2 seconds and someone managed to snatch his original German World War II paratrooper helmet. These helmets are worth a lot of money. They were completely devastated. His dream of being a seller at this fair completely shattered. They spent a lot of money to come here all the way from Spain. But even after what happened, he really wanted to give me something an original World War I German belt buckle. I tried my best not to accept it, but it is what he wanted. This shows what a good heart this guy has. Please give him some love, share and visit his website and spread the news. Okay, so I just got this Gott mit uns first World War belt buckle from this amazing guy over here. And that is, that is fantastic because he's been a follower since the beginning, like even before History Secrets. And yes. that is, he's a diehard follower. Been a long time following you. And, and if, if any of you want to follow us, we are on Instagram. Okay. Uh, it's our only social media. All right. It's uh, at Cascorro Militaria. All right. Uh, I, I don't know where I had a paper here to show people but I can't find it but yeah you can follow us there you really have amazing quality items over here and I really recommend getting on his website right now Thank and you. buying some stuff because he, he really deserves it this is, a, this is his first time here yep. and it's a bit it's been a, a very big trip where are you coming from from Spain from Madrid it's it's been uh, many hours of driving and many hours yeah. of plane and yeah and you've been waiting nine years to come here nine years I mean nine, nine, nine I was I was ten when I started collecting and the first video I saw was a video from Cine and I had to come that and is, I'm here for the first time so that is unbelievable it is a, a dream come true to a certain extent absolutely yes wow look at all these things over here some great quality stuff this has helmet right there which is a, uh, a relic great prices really good stuff they're both very nice Ja, wat er gebeurt. 
gebeurd is. Ja. Dat is echt verschrikkelijk. Het is wat druk hier opeens. Ja, hè? Jezus Christus. Echt hier? Ja. Oh, fucking hell. Brian, have you bought anything so far? Nope. Nothing? Not yet. We've been walking here for quite a while. And But there is so much. There is way too much to see. And uh, you know what it is? Then you see something and you think, should I buy it? But probably yeah. a few uh, a few blocks uh, farther, then you find yeah. exactly the same thing, but uh, yeah. less or... Uh, or more, or way more. More, more... Uh, there is just too much to take a look at things. Yeah. That's the problem. You got rifles, you got I see things everywhere. I mean, I could I could hang around here for a bit. I could hang around here for a bit, but, but this is still Hall One, everyone. Hall One, and we are not even on the other side. We are still yeah. On the same block. It's it's ridiculous. I hate myself. I hate myself. I hate myself. I just did buy a few things. Yeah, me too. For a good price. <laughs> yeah, the helmet, right? The helmet was a really good. I just bought an M1 helmet, which is a Today. real. Yeah, can you wait? Yeah, I got him. I just got this helmet. Um, yeah, here you can see it. It has. Uh, let me check. It has an original liner, That's original chin strap. Original. This all original. Even the leather is. Yeah, even smooth. the leather. Everything is original, except the uh, the decal, which has been painted on the front, and the chin strap has been replaced. Obviously, as you can see. Uh, but the rest is all original. It's all for 180. So that is that is really cheap. That's better than the one you first wanted to buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So that's nice. And I got two. American Mestins, which I will show you later. Uh, they were 20 each as well, so that's a good price. Oh, I see more stuff. So, what did you buy? M5 gas mask bag? Yes. That is really cool. And what did you pay for it? 150. 150. It's a nice that, price. That is a really good price. It's yeah. still very smooth. Soft. Yeah, it's soft. really soft. Army Assault gas mask. That is pretty cool. Oh, man. Yeah, most of them are like really brittle. And yeah. And by the most I see there's always a strap broken yeah, or exactly. missing or this one is just nice complete. Yeah, that's nice. So, really nice. For uh, the airborne. Uh, the, for the airborne. Yeah, exactly. That is really cool. Nice, yeah, congratulations. Very happy. Yeah. Thank you. you too with your uh, helmet. Yeah. <laughs> And, and the Garand belt, which I bought for 25. Yeah. Which and your like, shoes. And my shoes, yeah. And the uh, Mestins. And the Mestins, yeah. <laughs> you bought the most. So so <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You will, you will not buy something. You yeah, buy just the don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's nice. I want to have Oh, look, a bunch of original liners here. Yeah. That is amazing. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, it is. There's so much to see, I just don't know where to go. That's the problem with this place. You don't know where to go. Hello. Hi. We meet again. Yes, we do. <laughs> so we finally did the first haul. Yes. Uh, and you bought some things? You bought a bayonet, right? Well, I bought a bayonet. I'm gonna get it down. And that's also fun? It's uh, for my uh, World War II assassin impression, of course. All right. Because uh, we're trying to get it as accurate as possible. Yeah. So we're gonna get it. Show us. We Show us what you got. Bayonet. <laughs> bayonet reveal with the uh, Broldo. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is that is pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. Don't stab people while, <laughs> while we're walking. Oh, let's wait. They're waiting over there. Yo. <laughs> we're walking to the second hall, right? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Well, I am uh, sometimes I'm in bread in French. I'm <laughs> in pain. Oh, look at this. I need to eat something. Well, not now, but later. Well, there, there are some good hamburgers. Okay, I'm going to eat a hamburger. What is this? <laughs> hmm. Don't need a wheel? Yes. There you go. Nice display piece. Oh, what is this over here? Can I make uh, that's a, a hot dog. A hot dog, all right, interesting. Damn, I need to eat something before I die. Ah, oh, good, good. Okay, let's enter the second hall. Here we go. Oh my god, no, not again. Oh, not again. Last time I was here, it was like around three years ago. Yeah. Uh, it was foggy outside and you could see fog hanging in the Really? Hall. Yeah, Inside yeah, yeah, the yeah. hall. Oh my god. You couldn't see the uh, end of the hall. That is horrible. <laughs> almost uh, almost <laughs> personal damage. <laughs> but, uh, that was just the uh, granada. Oh. oh my god. 
Well, obviously, as you can see, I bought some more stuff, but I need to show you later because I can't even walk over here. But this is what it looks like to walk in the Cine military. Well, actually, you should, when we are in the other alley, yeah. you should uh, check it like from that side because it's going downhill. Yeah. It's like really, really deep. It's you know like, what's going downhill as well? Your wallet when you're walking here. Yeah, true. <laughs> And I took it personal. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing missing is a moth flying out of it. <laughs> oh my god. Well, they're already packing in here. Yeah. They do but that now it's, 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 it's the perfect time to get a good bargain. Sometimes, yeah. Because like people are like trying to get rid of their stuff. Yeah. So let's get, take a look in the stuff. Okay, so we decided to um, to eat something. Historically correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, this is genius, right? I was trying to figure out how to eat this, but then I thought, wait a second, I bought these kochkashirs, so perfect. So you borrowed one of them. That's gonna be five euros, please. And um, <laughs> as History Secrets would say, yeah. historically correct. Historically correct. Well, not really, but let's no, say historically well, correct. Yeah. Historically correct. <laughs> yeah. But as you can see, everyone else is still buying things, and I, I, uh, I'm buying too much, so it's better to just have a fries break right now. Which was also very expensive. Right? Very expensive, but just let's just not think about it. It's nice. Oh crap! <laughs> oh my god! No way. What the? F <laughs> You can see it's coming to an end. Everyone is leaving. Uh, tables are empty. And I have to find Brian somewhere and his girlfriend because I have no clue where he is. He's probably buying the, uh, the MG lock. Yeah, he's like a fly. He suddenly is gone. And then you cannot find him anymore. We finally found him, but now he's he decided to buy an MG uh, tripod. He's so fast. Uh, I'm walking with this all the time. It's hurting my fingers. My God. Ow! My knee. But like I said before, as you can see, uh, everyone is leaving. Oh, there were way more people. You couldn't even really walk. That's why I couldn't really film too much today because most of the times I was just looking at my own feet trying to stay up. But yeah, oh my god, we're losing him. We're losing him in traffic. There was so much more to see, but I just couldn't. <laughs> There's so much. Oh my god, he's going outside. Where is he? Oh, he's over there. Oh, good stuff. Look at all this food. Ooh, wheels. Apparently, this is the only police we have over here. But, but that is not a legitimate... Uh, police car. No, 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 it's a legitimate police car, but that, that's not a uh, recognized pattern to have on your police car. What is it? That is like, I have never, normally it's like that. It's like more British and style. Yeah, this is just... <laughs> this is only for this area, maybe. <laughs> we, we have police car at yeah. home. Where? He's over there, he's on the thing already. How is he so fast? For two seconds to the left and he's just gone. Ah, back inside this hall again. Oh, my the hall knee. of death. The hall of death. No, the hall of death. <laughs> For me it's the hall of death. Oh my god, you can see that everything is like in a panic mode because everyone's to buy things. I can't even speak anymore. You can, you can just feel the tension of everyone. Everyone is still trying to buy things really quick. Oh my god. Oh. Again inside this hall. I've spent hours in here. Where is he? Over here? Let's go. Okay, so we are. Okay, here we are. Is it still there? It's still there. Okay, nice. Gonna take it. You're gonna buy it? I'm gonna take it. How much is it? 1350. 1350. 1350 uh, euros. 13 okay. euros 50 is not the game. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's do it. That's how much the French fries cost. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, as you can see, everyone is uh, cleaning their stuff here as well, or everyone is leaving. Um, all that's left are just little flyers, and that's basically it. And he wants to buy the thing right now. Okay, there goes the deal. 100. Uh, yeah, that's how it goes. Six. Yeah. <laughs> It's a beautiful piece though. It's nice. Nice. There you go. You got it. Yep. Happy? <laughs> yeah. 
Happy. 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 Awesome. Happy. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. That's not where I came for. I, th I know. Oh, I got a stick. <laughs> you, you, you bought a stick for 1,300 euros. <laughs> what are you going to do with it now? Is I'm going to put a... A stick on it. It would make a perfect fishing pole, I guess. A nerf gun. A nerf gun. You, you yeah. can use it for fishing. Now I'm fishing. gonna put uh, my MG34 or my MG42 on it. So. 34? You have a 34? I got a 34. Since when do you have a 34? Since a year, a couple of years. I never know that. I never knew. I never knew. Two years, or maybe. I never knew it. Uh, from 1949? Nine? 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 1949? Oh. I didn't yeah. even know that. I got it for a long time. You got so much, I don't even know. I only but have one of these things. Nice for the summer. <laughs> nice, I think that's the last thing you're gonna buy today, I'm pretty sure. In a few weeks as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna sell the old one I have. Oh yeah, you already have this uh, one. This one is a little bit yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's this one is a little better than the, the one I have. And it's still in complete working uh, order. The one I yeah. have is... Not in complete working this order. This is nice, it's nice, okay. And it's a nice price. N normally you pay for those uh, things uh, 1,700 euros, so... 1,700 euros for a free piece leg. of steel. Yeah. And you just saying, I hate this hobby. You see a lot of free <laughs> legs, but <laughs> most of them are... Why? For, uh, I hate this hobby. I hate this hobby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man. Oh my god, and I was broken. Um, I think this is a moment we have to go to the car and stop buying things. Yeah, I think that's the best thing we can do right now. Yeah, because you're even buying shirts. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna buy another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay for two, ten more minutes and we're we're, do, we're broke. So let's not do this. Let's get out of here. Yep. Let's go. Let's go back home. I'm done buying things. There was a reason I wasn't going here for a while. Damn it. It's a trap. It's yeah, it's a it, it's one big trap. This whole this whole building is one big trap. No, 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 no! Don't look at the helmet. <laughs> don't look at the helmet. He didn't see. Yeah. It's also marked somewhere. Yeah, I hope I hope it's marked for that price. I saw the price and I took it personal. <laughs> Well, have fun with it. Well, it's time to leave, finally. I have enough stuff. <sighs> At least I got everything for a good price. I told them myself I'm not gonna buy anything. So I'm, I made a big mistake. I'm parked right there. Oh, you're parked so right there. Okay, I'm so we're gonna, park we're park gonna part ways here. Uh, let yeah, me try to give you a hand. Let me try to give you a hand. Good, good, good. Yeah, we talked. It was nice again to meet you. Yeah, it was nice to see you. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, bis bald. Bis bald. Bye bye. Have a safe journey. So, we are leaving from Belgium back to the Netherlands with stuff yes. worth a lot of money for other people's. Looks like sticks for us. It's history. And that's why we buy it. It looks like sticks. It is. It, it, it are basically, sticks. It basically are sticks. Metal sticks for Metal sticks. I cannot wait to look at my stuff when I'm home. <laughs> so, cannot wait to take a look at all the stuff that I bought again, which I told myself not to do. I wish I could film a little bit more. It was just really hard being inside this big, huge hall with like thousands of people. You couldn't even really see where you were walking because there were too much people. too much people. Yeah, you had to watch if stuff wasn't going to be stolen because that's unfortunately what happened to our friend right there. Got a uh, German paratrooper helmet stolen, which is extremely, extremely uh, devastating. He waited nine years, nine years to come here. It was his dream. Finally came here and then they steal the most beautiful helmet that was on the table. A single decal, Flaschenbieger style helm. Horrible. <laughs> Bye bye! Yeah, 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 privacy policies! <laughs> there were only two security guards for this whole area, and I believe like four police officers for this whole event basically here. So that's, yeah, so much stuff gets stolen here. <sighs> we are still walking. It's so far away. And this is not everything, the rest is actually in Brian's backpack because I couldn't carry it anymore but this is so oh uh, it starts to hurt your fingers after a whole day walking damn it oh finally ow god damn it <laughs> can you get it back together or 
I'm just watching the marks. Oh, okay. On it. But Mark isn't here today. Here. This is Mark. CHX. And there oh, is a Waffenamt. Oh, yeah. Waffenamt. Sehr schön. Well, I don't care. Oh, what? Whoa! Hey! What the is, that really, do? is that really necessary? <laughs> just went for some gas. And now we have to try to find ourselves a way through traffic because we need to follow this line of cars over here. Oh my god. Because everyone is going home right now. Perfect. Thank you. We appreciate it. Ow, my head! <laughs> Bump my head! It's nice to be back home. Uh, I was just taking a look at all the stuff I bought today, and I, um, I, re I really, I really did a good job. <laughs> uh, so I just displayed it really quick. I wasn't out there in the first place today to buy anything at all. Maybe I was thinking about buying buckle boots for uh, my uh, reenactment impression for in the, you know, later in the war, in the winter and stuff. I bought those, but all this stuff was basically <laughs> unnecessary. Um, but I saw these prices and I made some good deals. Some of these items are just are just a steal. And like I said before already, um, uh, I didn't have time to look everywhere, obviously, because it's these halls are so extremely big and there is so much to see. Even if you would run, you would not have time to check everywhere. Um, so yeah, basically just uh, uh, scanned fast and 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 uh, these are the few things that I well I saw I saw a lot more awesome stuff for good prices, but these were the things that just caught my eye and. Uh, I could get for a really good price. So yeah, I'm gonna show you some of the items and I'm gonna explain you what they are. I'm gonna tell you how much I paid for them and what they usually go for. Let's take a closer look at all this amazing stuff. Um, I had some food right now, I had some coffee and finally my headache is starting to disappear a little bit right now. <laughs> I still cannot believe that I bought some of these items for some really insane prices. So let's just start with the, the replica stuff over here. Um, so these are buckle boots. Um, they're, like I said, they're replica, but they're really, really nice, high quality ones. As you can see, they're obviously unissued, but they're really nice. They have the, um, you know, the nails and everything inside of it. Really, really smooth leather. Um, great quality, like I said. Um, bought these for 110. So yeah, I had to take off my shoes right there. I had to try them with 10,000 people walking around me. But uh, yeah, uh, they fit me perfectly fine, and I'm definitely going to use, I, li I really like it, it's really nice and soft. Um, but I'm definitely gonna use these um, at reenactment events. So that is really nice, really happy with that. Something that I bought as well is this nice belt for the pants over here. They look really unique and um, yeah, it's just really nice. So I'm gonna use this one for, uh, for reenacting. Bought this one for five euros, <clears throat> which is a good price. Let's just go to this over here. So this right here is an original World War I belt buckle. It's in great shape. It was found together with a uniform. He actually showed me pictures of that. And this awesome, awesome guy gave me this for free, even though this horrible thing happened uh, this day. It was their dream to stand here, display their stuff, and just be on this big, you know, military affair for the first time, and their dream just basically got shattered because one nasty piece of shit decided to steal their paratrooper helmet. And you know, these, these helmets are worth thousands of, of, of euros, dollars. They are extremely rare helmets. He was talking to someone for like two seconds and then it was gone. It, it's unbelievable. And there were only like two two security guards and four policemen in the, in the whole area uh, guarding everything. So uh, it's, it's, it's a real shame. You're just devastated after something like that. You know, it, it was so much work to come to this place, you know, by plane all the way from Spain and, and bring all this stuff over and then something like that happens. So please take a look at the uh, website. It would be nice to show him some support and uh, visit his website often. 
and maybe follow him on Instagram if you want to. So uh, a while back he contacted me and said he had a present for me but because this um, this helmet got stolen right now he had to sell it because obviously they lost a lot of money right now. First of all because of the trip and now this item got stolen and no one was really buying at their stand so uh, he had to um, he had to sell the item in order to you know um, get some money back out of this obviously but he still decided to give me something else and that was this beautiful first world war Gott mit uns which means God with us belt buckle in extremely great conditions like I said already before this was found together with a uniform he showed me uh, a picture of the uniform where it was found with and um, I'm extremely extremely happy with it um, I tried to talk him out of it I was saying he didn't have to give me this but he said because of you I'm standing here and he, I, I, I really appreciate it man he told me that I was one of the first YouTube channels that he was ever following it's just a really big honor to have this item right now in my collection I am extremely sorry for what happened but this belt buckle my friend is really 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 cool see even my dogs like it but yeah as you can see it's in great shape um, unbelievable first world war belt buckle in insane condition and he gave it to me because he was so thankful he said because of you I'm here my first video actually got him interested in um, in, in, in going here the thing is uh, this video doesn't even exist anymore because this was actually on my old channel uh, years ago but wow thank you so much I cannot thank you enough for this amazing gift this is going to get a beautiful place in my collection now we're gonna continue I bought two mestins uh, I bought these mestins for 20 euros each uh, which is a really good price normally these are like uh, 35 40 sometimes 50 sometimes even more it depends um, but 20 euros each for an original mestin from 1944 they're both from 1944 and to be honest I haven't even really looked at all the items in person so close yet because you know I just finished eating and stuff and I now see that there is actually a D over there that's definitely the initials of a soldier right here as well there's a G so it's DG DG or GD if you write from down up <laughs> that is really nice it's US MACO 1944 as you can see stainless steel let me take a look on the other side right here look at that that is really nice I love these stainless steel items from the US Army like I said it's stainless steel so it's it's still in great condition um, I'm gonna open it up actually for the first time I haven't looked at the inside yet I hope there's not still food inside of it even though it would be historically correct okay there we go I had to open it up with two hands because it was kind of tight and now we're gonna open it up okay look at that that is really 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 nice and I can use this for display or actually for reenacting because you know it's still in great condition so that is really nice I'm going to put it over there I'm gonna keep those together and this one still has a price tag as you can see and this one actually has a name on it right there which is saying Kurt or Kurt Kurt actually I thought it was German Kurt <laughs> uh, Kurt K-U-R-T-H Kurt that is interesting too bad there is not like a number or anything because then we would have been able to maybe find the actual soldier who this belonged to oh there's actually a really big B on it look at that so it's probably Kurt B <laughs> look at this there's a huge B on it and of course yeah it was real oh whoa there's an actually that's an actual name right there there's actually a name right there look at that oh that's a whole name wait give me one second Rot Rotsky 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 what Rotsky 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 what's that supposed to mean Rotsky Rotsky B Rotsky Rotsky is that some kind of nickname on oh, there's oh there's actually a lot of text on it if you just look at it at the right angle you can see there is more over there it's hard to see oh there is a lot of text on this okay that is really interesting I'm definitely not going to use this one for reenacting because I don't want the text to faint I have to take a closer look at that later uh, of course it was really oh there's there's more text over there K0522 that is interesting okay uh, I need to take a closer look at this later because that is really interesting look at this this is so nice 
um, this is one of the things that I like, you see? All these little stripes are from a knife, you see that? From eating his meal inside this mess thing and just using his knife and his fork, you can see all the stripes right there. That That's the things that makes it so personal, you know? And that's that's what I really like. And these, these are original together, so I'm gonna keep them together like this, obviously. I'm gonna put them right there, I'm gonna examine these names later. Right here we have two original World War II um, helmet nets and if you don't know what, what these nets are for they're actually to uh, put over a helmet and then you would put branches or whatever between it um, so you're camouflaged that's that's the purpose of these nets uh, for camouflage reasons um, so I found a like a little box full of these nets and they're all three euros each normally these nets are way more expensive these are complete I found broken ones as well I to be honest Always when I'm home, I'm thinking like, oh, I had to buy more of them because there were just three euros each and there were a bunch of them and they're original. Um, but I only bought two of them for obviously then six uh, euros um, and they're original, like I said, so really, really, really cheap. Great to use for or reenacting or just as a display piece. Two original pistol belts. I bought these pistol belts for, as you can see, 35 only. That is nothing. These are original pistol belts on a shoot condition. Um, as you can see, they're like mint condition, 100% original. Um, that's that's that is really really nice for 35 euros. That's nothing. Normally these these go for like um, around the. Well, this is mint condition. They go from around 55 to like 70. That is absolutely amazing. Look how stiff they still are. That is really, really cool. So, original pistol belts from the Second World War. The early ones, as you can see, it's still the light color. Um, for only 35 each, which is really, really cheap. Then we have this one. Uh, this is an unissued uh, M1 Garand belt. There were a couple of them. And normally, uh, you see these, I've seen these today actually, for 125 everywhere. Some, some of them are even more actually. This one is mint condition managed to get this one for 25 euros. And there was actually another one for 25, and for some reason I didn't buy it. But I'll, like I said already, when I'm home, I'm always like, oh, I have to buy more of them. But yeah, just let's forget about that. Unissued condition, uh, just as you can see, the price tag is still on it, it's 25. It was only 25. Uh, it's a little bit oxidated, as you can see right there. But that's no big deal. Um, yeah, just really, really, really nice uh, pistol belt in mint condition. Here, <laughs> this is also insane. These are original German World War II uh, rifle straps, uh, K90AK or MP40. They're actually really similar, MP40 or K90AK. There was, again, a box full of these and they were 25 euros each. Normally, these belts go for around 175 each. I decided to buy two, and now again, I'm home, and I, I, I think like, oh, I had to buy a bunch more of them. But you know, you're busy, I had a headache, and you're like, oh, I wanna go there, and I wanna go there, and I wanna go there, and you don't think straight. But, you know, I bought two of them, that's nothing. These are normally like 175 each, and as you can see, they are in fantastic condition. Um, look look at the pattern right there, it's 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 great, it's, they're, they're really really supple it's as you can see it's 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 just great condition and they're they're original and they smell so nice well they obviously don't smell like new leather but I mean they smell like old leather the smell of old leather and that is nice uh, original straps um, I can't believe I could buy these actually for this price uh, the longer I'm home the more I start to realize how stupid I was that I didn't buy more of them there you can still see a stamp it's hard to see, but it's there. Uh, but yeah, two of these for an extremely good price. Like, extremely good price. Let's continue. Okay, so there was this table full of stuff, and there were a bunch of these German M31 uh, Mestins, or Kochkashi 31. I only bought three of them, but there were a bunch more. But, look at the prices. 25, 
all right? This one was 40, and this one was 25. So it would be 90. I said all for 80, and that was fine. So I got these three for 80 euros. Normally, you wouldn't find these cheaper than 55, 60, going up from there. These are really nice ones, uh, matching top and bottom. This one has more paint, so this one would probably be like 70. So these are original German World War II Mestins. Let me give you a close-up of them. You can see the manufacturer right there, and 40, which means 1940. As you can see right there as well, 1940. And right here on the top, that's interesting, you can actually see a number. It says 1425524. Five, so this is definitely a soldier's personal number. And it's also saying that actually, let me take this off, here we go. You can see the same number, 5524, five, right there. So that definitely tells us that this is matching with the top and the bottom, which is funny because you can see that the, the, the top and the bottom is actually a little bit different in color. This one is like more black. And that could also be, of course, because of fire, but I'm pretty sure this is a little bit, yeah, yeah, you can see that's a little bit different, the color is a little bit different, because obviously that happened a lot. If, if you would lose, like, the top or it would get damaged, you would get a new one. So that's interesting, the soldier carved his number inside of it, um, because it was his messed in, and he wanted to use it, and he didn't want Hans to eat out of it and get his baterias inside of his mestin, obviously. So that's why he did it. That's why soldiers put their numbers on it because it was their their personal stuff. Interesting thing is uh, you can see the numbers actually scratched out. So probably this, this one was later used again by someone else. Maybe this one, this person, because here you can see it says SG or something and it seems like it's actually two letters. There was something else right there as well and there was an F right there and later someone made an S right there again and a G I think so this one was definitely used by a couple soldiers so that's really interesting I like the way it's worn because this sh this should be all green but look at the way it's worn that's what I like to see so yeah really nice used condition M31 messed in second one right here we can see again initials right there E H would have been funny if there was a question mark behind it eh? but right here on the side it says something as well I'm not sure what it is. That's supposed to be a G or something, I don't know. Uh, this one is also marked 1940. And we can see a nice stamp right there as well. HRE40, which means 1940. As you can see again, scratch marks right there everywhere. This part is steel and as you can see the paint is still really nice there. Let's take a look at the bottom part. Got some dust in there obviously. But uh, yeah, just a, another <laughs> really, really nice uh, used. M31 Mestin for an insanely cheap price. And then this one, uh, which has a lot of paint still on it, as you can see, it has a name on the side right there. I think it says Bawa. And uh, let's take this off. We can see the marking on the side right there. It says 1938. So this one is actually two years earlier than the other ones. Those are 1940. And the funny thing again actually is you can see right there it has a different marking and this is 1941. So the, the bottom part is marked 1938 and the top part is marked 1941. Yeah it's definitely you can see it, the condition completely matches with, with the top and the bottom. So these are definitely together since uh, since the war but you know probably maybe in 19, 1941 he lost the top or it got damaged or something he was like oh Ludwig uh, can I have another one and then you know they got another one and there you go that's how it worked you can just see that the condition really matches with the bottom and the top and again look at all these scratch marks right there can you imagine one day a German soldier was eating out of this exact same top right there this and he was he was eating his meal while maybe he heard gunshots in the background and he was just using his knife like it's amazing you know all these little pieces of history everywhere it's it's fantastic so that's a beautiful german M31 Kochgeschirr. And then we have this helmet yeah uh, this is a very very nice M1 helmet. I saw this one. Uh, well, actually, I saw a lot of M1 helmets today, obviously. But this one caught my eye because it had a nice color. Um, first thing I noticed was there was a front seam. So that, that means it's always a World War II shell. Be careful, though, because they actually fake this as well. So yeah, but this is this is actually front seam. Just really quick, front seam is always a World War II shell. That's what I saw. I saw a nice original front seam M1 helmet shell and I was like okay you know that's nice I can I can if I can get it for a good price 
Uh, maybe I can use it for reenacting or something, you know? Obviously, this is not real. Someone painted it on. Uh, maybe for reenactment or something, I don't know. Or just as a display piece, I have no clue. But the rest of the helmet, uh, the color right here actually seems to be original. The strap of the helmet, as you can see, has been replaced. It is way too new compared to the paint of the helmet. But then I was looking at the inside of the helmet, right? Okay, and I was like, is this an original liner? And yes, it turned out, actually, this is an original liner. This is all original. Everything in here is original. This has not been restored. This is all real. This is an original liner in great condition. As you can see, it's great condition. Uh, let me see. You can actually see the, uh, the manufacturer right there. Right there, you can see it. It's a little W. And that little W actually means uh, Westinghouse Electric Company. So it's a Westinghouse liner with the original chin strap, original leather band. It has a nice marking here as well, as you can see right there. That is really nice. That is an original liner in fantastic condition. Let me take it out and show you the outside of it. It is absolutely great condition. An original M1 helmet liner. And then I was taking a look at the inside of the helmet. And <laughs> as you can see, this is definitely original color. And I was like, let me take a look at the heat stamp. And then I noticed this, it has an S right there. Okay, I did not expect that. So if you're not familiar with uh, M1 helmets, um, let me explain you something if there is an S right there. There were two manufacturers who produced M1 helmets during the war. One of them was McCourt and one of them was Schluter. There were a total of 22 million helmets produced during the war. 22 million. 20 million of them were produced by McCourt. So that's that's definitely the, the most common M1 helmet you would find if you find in a World War II M1 helmet. It's, it's most likely going to be a McCourt. The other 2 million helmets that were produced were made by Schluter. So they are rare because considering there are like 20 million produced by McCourt. There were only 2 million produced by Schluter. And I got my hands on a Schluter. Not even knowing that it was one. I didn't even look at the heat stamp at all. But you can clearly see the S right there. You can see the difference in shape. It's a Schluter. And then I looked at the number. It actually has a name as well right there. Right there it says a Ray. Uh, but the number of this helmet is really interesting too. I'm trying to show you, it's pretty hard, but it says 30A. So the heat stamp of this helmet is saying 30A. So that's where you would find it. This is the front of the helmet. As you can see, it, the seam is at the front. Later, the seam was moved to the back, but 30A, and then it's a Schluter. Let me show you really quick. Here you can see the heat stamps of the um, Schluter helmets. These right there are the first one, 10A, 20A, 28, and 30A. Um, that's gonna be fixed bail front seam stainless steel so it's around January or February 1943 it's like one of the first batches of helmets that was produced so it should actually be a front seam fixed bail so from like 170 a there they actually switched to swivel bail. So this helmet was originally produced with fixed bales fixed bales actually um, it's like loops but then just fixed on it like really poorly made and they often broke off and that's why later they actually invented the swivel bill which is here you can see this is swivel bill it's like it, it looks different but the interesting thing is you can actually see that the fixed bales broke off you can still see uh, remains of it right there and right there as well so this helmet, the bales broke off. So this was later modified, probably 1943, 1944. It was changed to uh, swivel bale. So this was actually changed during the war. And you can see that that is really, really interesting. So originally this was a fixed bale front seam. As you can see, seam is on the front. Later in the war, end 1944, 1945, um, it was changed to the rear. Uh, later the rims were made from a different material as well, but stainless steel, front seam, fixed bale, and later changed to swivel bale. And it's also a Schluter with a almost mint condition liner for 180 euros. I paid 180 for this beautiful helmet and 
yeah, I, I need to remove this decal somehow because that's obviously not original. So here you can still see the price over there, 180. Uh, so I had no problem paying this price for it. Um, even though I didn't even know it was a Schluter back then. I just bought it because it was an original liner and just a nice shell, but I did not expect it to be a Schluter. That is that is a great score. Uh, so overall, <laughs> I am extremely happy with the things that I bought. I had a headache, it was a busy day, but overall, I'm happy. All right, so I did some research and I found some stuff out about these mess sins. Um, first of all, um, this one, uh, which I saw the D and the G on, uh, I was taking a look at the back right now actually and I discovered something else. It's pretty hard to see but you can definitely see there is a name right there. Well that's all I know about this one but this one is more interesting. As I saw yesterday already there is a big B right there and then it said Rotsky Rotsky. I was like what does that mean? You can see it right there. Um, it's hard to see in camera. In person it's more easy to see. I wasn't sure what it meant if it was just a B and then Rotsky Rotsky or if it was actually Bratsky Bratsky with a with a big B right there. Um, but there as you can see you have this number right there. You can see it 420 and it's hard to see on camera, but I actually managed to um, completely find out what it was saying over here. So there are eight numbers right here, and that's the personal uh, serial number of a US soldier. And like I said before, it's hard to see on camera, but after taking a close look at it, I managed to find out that the number is 42041466. Four, two, zero, four right there you can see the four right next to it there is a one yeah it's really hard to see on camera and then we have another four and then you can see um let me see if i can show you that it's impossible to see almost but it's six six right there i looked that number up and guess what i found him and as you can see his name is matching the serial number four two zero four one four six six brodsky Joseph. So the big B is actually Brodsky Brodsky. That is really interesting because um, it's like I said before, it's really funny that there is like a really, really big B and then it said Rotsky Rotsky. So it's actually Brodsky Brodsky. So that's probably his nickname. That's maybe how they called them or something. So it's Brodsky Brodsky and there is his serial number underneath it. So we actually found the owner um, of this Mastin, which is amazing. You can see the date of enlistment, 2209-1943. He was a private, and right there you can see term of enlistment. Uh, he wasn't a volunteer, he actually had to go to war, as you can see. He was from New York, he was born in 1925, and that's the information of this soldier who was eating from this Mastin. And yeah, that's just really, really cool that we have some personal information about this right now. Bronx, New York, date of enlistment, 21st of September 1943, New York City. Really, really interesting. So that is really, really cool. But on the other side, we had another name, remember? We found this name right there, Kurth. So we didn't have a complete army serial number. So a US World War II army serial number would normally be eight numbers. We couldn't find eight numbers right here, right? But we did find this right there, remember? Every soldier uh, had a personal laundry number as well. So a soldier's laundry number consisted of the soldier's last initial followed by the final four digits of their army serial number. So we know the name right there, Kurth, and this right here is actually saying K0572. So I looked up this laundry number and I found it. There we go, George W. Kurth. There is his name and his complete serial number, which is 35580572. Date of enlistment, 12th of January, 1943. Indianapolis, Indiana. So we have another soldier who used this Mestin. And here we actually have some more information. He was born in 1923, as you can see, and he died in 1987 with the age of 63 or 64. He is currently buried on Richland Cemetery, Gary, Lake County in Indiana. Too bad there is no picture of his grave, but we know he died pretty young 
at 63 or 64. Uh, so he actually survived the war. So that is some really, really cool um, personal information. I, I don't know which division they were attached to or anything, but this is what I could find so far. So that is really, really cool. Uh, sorry for talking so much. Even when editing right now, I was getting crazy of myself because it was blah, 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 blah. I kept, I just kept talking. But when I start to do research, I just keep talking and I keep looking at the stuff. And believe me, I, I had to edit a lot of stuff out because I, I just keep talking. But yeah, it's so extremely exciting to just, you know, find out a name and a number and then just actually connect this item to a person who actually used this back in the war. That is something really really special hopefully you can find out more of these soldiers and maybe you can find a picture of them also something that i actually completely forgot to mention is that when we were there um suddenly the eod was standing outside and one part of the uh, of one of the halls was blocked off because someone actually took a live grenade there and was trying to sell it. So yeah, there was actually a grenade in working order just laying there on the table, ready to be sold. And luckily they found out and the EOD came and they uh, took care of it. But imagine if, if, if a kid would play with it or something or someone would mess around with it and this thing would go off with these thousands of people right there. It would have been a pretty different day. But luckily nothing happened. You always have to be careful. I'm still extremely happy with all the new stuff that I got and um, I cannot wait to display it as soon as I find a place to actually display it because I'm a little full right now, but there is always space for more. I know this was a pretty long video. I hope I didn't bore you to death with my talking. I hope you could learn something from it and um, if not, well, there's nothing I can do about it. So this is where I'm going to end this video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did like the video, please leave a like and a comment. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.